<laughs> Morning, everybody. Morning. This is a cool school, and uh, the, the, the hay was uh, pretty good. Uh, God, did you hear what you said? One month left for school this year. That is incredible. That is wonderful. Right, and my name is Charles Payne, and this is Wendy Payne here, and as we said, we parents of these two. Uh, next birthday, I'll be turning 80, so gradually things are starting to fail in my body, you know, I don't hear so well anymore, and so on, but I can see, I can hear, I can taste, touch, and feel, uh, taste, touch, and smell. That's, 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 that's. But I want to tell you about a guy I read about in an ancient book that I found once. Uh, he had the dice loaded against him from birth, and uh, he had three names. His first name was Bart. Do you know about a Bart? And his middle name was Tim, and his surname was Myers. Um, Whatever way you want to say it, okay? And he was born blind, so he had a, you know? And in the part of the world in which he lived, and the age in which he lived, if a person was blind, they were not educated much. So the only thing that he could do was to beg. So Bart was a beggar because he was blind. And every day he sat on the roadside asking for money, you know? Okay, with a little dish. And he wore an old coat which became more and more filthy and caked with sweat and dust and all the rest of it. But this was the life that Bart had. Uh, so remember the three Bs? Bart was blind and therefore he was a beggar. Now I know many, many beggars in this world and they're not people who stand at the lights with a piece of cardboard. But there are a lot of people out there who are begging. They're really looking for what life's all about. And they're looking for some peace, and they're looking for some uh, motivation in life, and they want some meaning in life. Why should I stay alive? This world is such a terrible place. But deep inside, they're begging that someone will come and tell them where it's really at. And of course, in order to handle the pain in their heart, a lot of people have pain inside. They use medication, and the nearest one, of course, is alcohol. And then there are a whole range of drugs you can get, but young people all over the world are medicating themselves to hide the pain inside, and they're trying to fill their lives. They're begging for someone to come along and rescue them that, from what they're feeling inside. And even at home, they can't talk about these things. So I know plenty of those beggars, and they beg me for one reason. Because they're blind, okay? But we're going to go into that now. Well, one day Bart is on the roadside, and a crowd walks by. Now, he's heard plenty of crowds walking by, and he knows he doesn't get more money out of crowds than he gets out of people coming past on their own, because crowds usually play up to each other, you know? I'm not giving any to him. I'm not giving any. And so he... Here's this crowd coming by, and out of the hundreds of crowds he's heard coming by in his life, this one is different somehow. And in his heart he feels, hey, there might be an answer for me here. So he grabs hold of one of the people and says, who is passing by here? And the person says, Jesus is passing by. Ah, oh, Jesus. Now, he's the God who healed blind people, right? So there might be something here for Bart. So Bart prays. He does not fold his hands like this and bow his head. And he doesn't say, my dear heavenly father. He doesn't kneel. He shouts. Shall I shout? Yes. <laughs> Perhaps you can all shout with me. What he shouts is, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Now let's all shout that. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And he gets an answer immediately. A whole lot of voices say, shut up. <laughs> really, that's what they said. The 
crowd say, who are you to be calling upon this great man? You're the blind, filthy, unwashed beggar. Get out the way. You know? That kind of thing. And that is often the answer to the prayers that we pray that we hear. Because all around us there are voices saying, God doesn't hear our prayers. There's no God. It's hopeless praying. Your words only hit the ceiling and come down again. But Bartimaeus is not put off by crowds. He knows crowds. He said many of them walking by. So he prays again in exactly the same way. One, two, three. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And it's not just coming out of the head, it's coming out of his heart. You know? He's desperate. He has a prayer. Now, guys and dolls, boys and girls, um, when I was a young man, when I was a child at school, I mean, before my teens even, I had epilepsy, but no one knew it. Because it was the form that happened, and then you know, in just a couple of seconds, I'd sort of be in class and go, that kind of thing. And the teachers often said to me, Chop! Pay attention! <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. But nobody diagnosed the problem in those days. And only when I got older did I have a major attack. Biting my tongue, you know, I won't go through the whole thing here. And that, uh, I couldn't drive a car anymore. All sorts of things were phased out of my life uh, because of that. And I prayed. I didn't get on my knees and pray. I didn't fold my hand. But I walked around and I said, God, are you going to heal me? <laughs> Just like Bart prayed. And you know, I had to pray for many years. But one day the Lord said to me, I'm going to heal you. And I was healed. Uh, I won't go into the whole story now. Uh, but Bartimaeus' prayers were like that. Now, after he prays the second time, Perhaps he was ready to give up now because he had prayed twice and God hadn't answered. But because he was blind to what was happening in the invisible world, the spirit world, he couldn't see what was going on. And, and you know, when you pray from your heart, things happen that you can't see. <laughs> God will make a way uh, where there seems to be no way uh, is what he's doing for us in our answer to our prayers. And the Bible in Mark chapter 10 tells us Jesus stopped. So when we pray, when a dirty, unwashed, blind beggar prays, Jesus stops. Says, Hold it, someone's called me. And he stopped and he answered Bart's prayer. But he didn't speak to Bart directly. He said, you, 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 go and fetch him, bring him here. And you know, God often, well, almost always speaks through other people to us. Like I'm speaking to you now. This is, the Lord could be saying something to you are. But as we help each other and encourage each other, so that's the voice of Jesus speaking to other people, okay? So the crowd go over and they give this message to Bob. Oh boy, are you in big trouble. The principal wants to see you. And now you're something. What did I do? Or what didn't I do? But now the crowd go over and they say, Stand up! Be happy! <laughs> He's calling you. And I want to say that to you this morning. God has heard your prayers. Get up! Be happy! He's actually calling you. So it says, Bartimaeus took off his coat. He wasn't going to wear this thing anymore ever again in his life. And he was going to leave it behind. And if he died at the feet of Jesus and he couldn't get the answer there, he was going to die there rather than here. Do you know what I mean? You've got to be desperate about these things, guys. So he goes over and he walks up to Jesus feels him as a blind person would do. And now comes a wonderful scene. I want you to get it in your head. Jesus, the one who has made the universe, stretches out his hand into this poor, 
unwashed, stinking, blind beggar, he says, what do you want me to do for you? Uh, isn't that a great invitation? What do you want him to do for you? Ah, here comes the big chance. Bartimaeus is going to order a Big Mac every day with chips and all sorts of things. No, 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 he's going to think bigger than that. He's going to just give me a nice house to live in with taps that you know open and water flows out and stuff like that. Or, or give me a, a, a person to be by my side every day to lead me around. That will not answer God's real needs. And a lot of people are asking for more toys in their lives so they can be preoccupied by these things instead of asking for what they really need. And Bart asks for the right thing. He says, I want to see, Lord. This is my problem. I'm blind. I can't see. And many people need to pray their prayer. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. That I can see into that spirit world, that I can see Jesus, that I can understand this whole thing that people are talking about all the time. <coughs> and you know what? Jesus said, according to your faith, it will be done to you. Be healed and pop. <laughs> Bartimaeus could see. And it says he followed Jesus along the road. Now, guys and dolls, Keep praying. Don't give up. Don't give up the search because it's difficult to understand these things. He will meet you and he will say to you, what do you want me to do for you? And make sure you ask for your real need. The ability to see Jesus and to know what he wants to say. Let's all pray together. Lord, thank you that Bartimaeus did not go through a whole formal ritual when he prayed. But he shouted from the heart, Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. And that's what we ask, Lord, that you will have mercy on us all. And show yourself to us. And I pray for every boy and girl, every young man and woman here, that they will experience you in such a manner that will radically change their lives. And out of the school, you will bring Young people who are on fire for you because they've met you. Thank you for the way you looked off the bot and healed him. Amen.